that's his thing, politics. And uh, I just hope I'm around when, uh, when he passes to see the free-for-all that's going to go on because you know it's going to be a barn burner. From Bridgeport, as most of the Irish in Chicago seem to, to come out of, and uh, um, our branch of the family moved to 71st and Campbell, 7146 South Campbell, out in uh, the Market Park neighborhood. That's where uh, my father lived, um, I grew up, Mike Madigan. Uh, Big Mike, my uncle Mike, he and my aunt Rita, they settled into the house there. So they were, uh, um, they kind of became keepers of the homestead. And that was always the, the central um, place of the family is the bungalow there. He was the ward superintendent. He was in charge of all the city services for the 13th ward. At his wake, um, Old Man Daly, the mayor, uh, Richard I, he came in and he stood in line with everybody else, with all the precinct workers and everything else to pay his respects. He didn't put on any air, push in, push in line or uh, anything like that. You know, it's just salt of the earth. And uh, um, that's kind of the way my Uncle Mike was. Um, you know, the only thing that he was flashy about maybe was a, a new Buick every two years from Van Mail at 71st and Western. And I guess people used to wait in line for him to trade his, uh, his old Buick in. I still remember the one, it was, a, a, I think it was a 57 or 58. Um, I guess they called it the Riviera with all the chrome in it. Wow, that was, that was a, quite a ride. But uh, so there's, there's a connection to Daly's and Madigan's, you know, it goes way back. You know, that was just the way it was, family first. And um, um, everybody was, was pretty much that way. Like I said, my uncle John uh, worked for the Bureau of Electricity. Uh, my dad, you know, before he, you know, hit the skids, he uh, worked for the water pipe. Uh, the distribution system and um, you know it was family was public service was part of it and of course related to that was also uh, politics so everybody did their part I remember working with Michael uh, when I was still in high school after my dad passed away and after his dad passed away and going out and working the polls and uh, by the time I'd get over there after school, say about four o'clock or so, it was getting close to closing time. And Mike's big thing was going out, getting the seniors, people that he hadn't voted, offering them a ride to the polls, get the vote out. And I think really it, it kicked in around the time that he was elected to the uh, Constitutional Convention and Illinois Constitutional Convention. I remember him. At that point, I, that was when I really noticed that he was getting into politics, you know, and really getting serious about that stuff. I, I grew up when it was a gentleman's game, and I mean, you know, you had your Republicans, you had your Democrats, sometimes in the same family. But what Michael is just, you know, the accumulation and retention of power I think that over the last several years, since he's been in power and, and that, he's become much more analytical and, uh, you know, I don't think emotion plays into his um, decisions at all, except for the fact that he gets mad if you don't toe his line. The Prince by Machiavelli. 
that uh, that is kind of his guidebook. And it's where you put, set yourself up in a position where people come to you and ask you for favors, in, in a nutshell. And uh, that's certainly true, absolutely true, you know. The fact that he is responsible, you know, the, the only people that hold him are responsible uh, of, of the public, of the voting public, are the people in his district. And everything else that he has built, he has built on his own. Just with his influence and power, the money, the biggest thing, and then the contacts he made through his law office with the um, tax reassessments. And, uh, you know, he's, he's figured out how to do it. So, you know, I can't pick him on politics. And so I, I just kind of stay it aside. There's a line in the, uh, in the play, um, The Ice Man Cometh, where the old anarchist says he, uh, he's just going to spend his life on the grandstand of philosophical detachment, you know, and that uh, sounds good to me. Thank you.